Hey, what's going on, everybody? We're back with another BKFC Reddit Ask Me Anything. We're joined by Ruben, the bad boy War. How you doing, sir? Good, man. How you doing? Good. War is a badass last name. Is that your real name or like a, a moniker you, uh, you so, took? So I actually got adopted by this lady whose last name was War. Uh, my, my, I guess, real name is Ruben Lewis Cooper. Okay. Then I got adopted um, later on when I was in a, a teenager. Okay. So, I mean, that that's that's a crazy story right there. Like, you were a guy who has, like, a million stories, and you came out of, like, left field. And <laughs> I, I remember uh, – so let's talk about how BKFC discovered you. Where did, where did you come from? Uh, I went to the tryouts in Virginia. Okay. Uh, it was January 17th, I believe. I don't remember the exact date of it. But I, uh, I just went to the tryouts. No, You know, I had no – expectations or anything i just wanted to go and see if i still had it um showed up a little early and just worked from the time i got there till the time i was done and i was trying to get more work because i don't i don't really get a lot of work back home you know sure. so i was trying to get all the work i could and um obviously they liked what they saw and i told them i'd fight anybody at any time and uh now i'm here <laughs> Okay, so you did the tryouts, and I mean, not to be disrespectful to anybody else, but did you look around and you go like, "I'm like, I'm one of the best guys here," so you knew you were gonna make it, or? Uh, no, I don't. I don't ever. I don't ever see things like that. Um, okay. Honestly, I was trying to uh, get sparring work with like the biggest guy there. I, I, I'm. That's just who I am, man. I want to prove myself to everybody. I don't know why I do that, but I just that's just who I am, you know. Um. But my goal was to outwork everybody in that gym, and that's what I did. So okay, so you have like that you have that mentality that you are just like such a hard worker. Do you feel like that was instilled in you in the military? I know you're a military guy. Like, did no, you develop that? Man. No, I, I, I think it's just in my whole family is like that. Um, my mom, she works two jobs still. So my mom's a super hard worker. My grandpa's been working till he was like sixty five. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm 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 just learning about my family. Yeah. Um, but but I I did realize like oh shoot man like hard works in our DNA because you know everybody that I talk to in my family they're 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 grinding. You know what I mean? Um, and I've been grinding since I was like a teenager. Okay. You know I, I worked a full time job, school, and and wrestled in high school. Um, so I, I've always worked, 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 worked. You know, I can tell you're a wrestler. You got the ears for it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wrestled in high school and uh, went to state. Uh, did really well in freestyle and Greco. Cool. Um, and then transitioned it to MMA. Okay, so we'll talk about. So, like when we were watching the, the you were doing the press conference. You said you finally got like I guess it was like the third time you met your mom. So mm -hmm. it, yeah, it was about it was my fifth time. Okay, my fifth okay. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, I mean, you, you talked about being adopted. Like, when did you reconnect with your biological mother? Like, ah, uh, dude, so a crazy story. Uh, I was in, I, I didn't talk to her, um, till boot camp. I was in boot camp. Okay. And I got a letter and we started talking. I was 18. And, um, we didn't meet till I was about 28. Oh, wow. Okay, so how did like did your mom put you up for adoption? Like, I, like how did you come to live with the other lady whose last name was War? And then how did your mom find out that you know? Like, that's what I'm curious about. Uh, my mom was in prison. Okay, so um, I didn't see her because of that. That makes sense. So, um, but I think that's why. The person I mean that that adopted me, we didn't get along because oh, okay. I was so loyal to her. your mother. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And, sure. Um, I just wanted to find her, and then when I did, uh, we kept a phone relationship for about a decade. Okay, uh, wow. And then finally had the courage to to finally meet, you know, and. I don't know. It, it was not. It, it was like a tease. It was kind of like how the fight was. It was like a tease. It was. 
you know, you have all these questions built in your mind, sure. you have all these feelings in your heart and you get there and it's like, you freeze, you don't know what to say or how to act. Cause you know, it's never happened. And then it just, she goes away in a couple of days and it's like, fuck man, you know, I'm, now I'm back on my own. Okay. But I feel like, I feel like you went through a bunch of bad stuff. How important was it for you to be a, a, you seem like an awesome father, like your Instagram, like, you know, like a lot of people's Instagrams, like doing all this crazy stuff. Yours is always, your kids are in there. You're, you're doing yeah. stuff with your dog. Like how great is it to be a, like, I'm a father too. And I had, a, I had a shitty father growing up. And like, so like it taught me, like, I don't want to be that guy at all. So, I mean, you had a tough childhood growing up, but now like you're this amazing father and it clearly made you for the best. But like, how, how important is it you to be a great dad? Oh man, it's, I put so much pressure on me as a dad. Sure. Like, um, my baby mama will tell you like, ooh, man, I, I, I give my kids the world. I put my kids first before myself. I have been putting them first before myself. I've stopped. That's the whole reason why I stopped fighting okay. is it was getting too hard. So my, my baby mama was in school for a nurse practitioner. So okay. she's pretty much almost a doctor and I handled everything. I handled all the, I handled both our kids while she focused on school mm -hmm. and I didn't even have a car. I used to ride a bike. So I, I used to date this chick who, who bought me a bike and a buggy. Uh, wow. like in the back and yeah. i'd ride my bike to this factory dude and then on my lunch break i'd ride my bike to koa's school because he was in preschool and then i'll take him home then ride my bike back to work and then work an extra shift so i can have extra money go pay the ba the, the babysitter That's insane. and i did that seven days a week you know yeah. and then i was trying and then she would my my ex would take me to the gym and train and then it just got too much Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I was getting injured left and right. I couldn't, I couldn't stay healthy. Um, and, and then I just was like, you know, what? forget this. I'm just going to focus on my kids and just work and provide, you know, and, and that's all I did. My son, he's, he, we thought he was autistic. So we had him in all these testings and, and he had a, a, a speech impairment. Okay. So I had my son in, um, I had my son in speech therapy, occupational therapy, and physical therapy since he was two. And, and like me and my baby mama, we just grinded to make sure that our kids had everything because we never got that, you sure. know? And and it, it, it's, it's been a blessing, bro. It's it's nice to see, like, when you look back and you're like, man, I didn't get, I didn't have none of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I had yeah. any of that. And it's like, you look at your kids. My kids are top of their class. My my daughter's the hardest worker in the class. She gets awesome. awarded every day. She's the hardest worker. She knows she's just like her dad. Um, so I, I built this this momentum with these kids, like teaching them, you know, the value of family, the value of life, the value of working hard and everything that you do, and, and it's paying off for my kids, you know. And, and that's the only thing I care about. I don't care about nothing else, man. It is amazing how, like, like it's same thing. Like, I'm willing to put up with so much, so as long as yeah. my son like has the best life possible. And it sounds like you're in the same situation. Well, yeah, dude. It's and that's and that's why I meant like I had to do something different, bro. Cause yeah. like I was getting put at gunpoint in front of my kids. Like I was getting shot at in front of my kids. My kids like could hear like literally where I live down the road, bro. You hearing gunshots every day, bro. Like I live in the hood. I mean, like in Kentucky, it, it's, it's not like California. It's okay. not like Louisville is a grimy city. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and people out here, we have teenagers killing grown, grown people over shoes. Yeah, yeah. Shoes. Like, <laughs> you're getting killed over shoes, bro. $200, $300 shoes. So like Louisville is just different. And, and I had to change that. I had to, I had to change my ways and change my direction like quick. <laughs> or else I wasn't going to make it. And, yeah. and I didn't want that for my kids. I didn't want that for my life and you know, my girl's life. And so I, I just, I don't know. I took a different path, man. I, I can't really explain how, how it went so fast, but it, it just, it just happened. So when you, you have those pictures on your Instagram of your car getting shot up, like how did that happen? Man. All right. So, I worked for this roofing company called Southern Roofing and Renovations. 
Okay. And they freaking robbed me, dude. They robbed me like I gave in nine weeks. I gave them over three hundred k worth of work, bro. Okay. All right, I'm split in, and they're supposed to pay me thirty five percent of that profit. Okay, they never paid me, bro. They just stole my work, wiped me out of my pipe drive, stole all my work. So I was like panicking. I didn't know what to do, but I fell in love with the job. I fell in love with with what I did. Right. And right. so I, I went to another roofing company that somebody told me to, to come check out. And I said, hey, uh, I'm kind of in a bind. Um, I love this job. And I can promise you I'll be the hardest worker you got. And I will bring this company up to the number one spot. And his name's Justin, Justin Hignan. He goes, uh, yeah, let's do it. You know, like no questions asked. He's like, bro, I'm going to give you 40% profit now instead awesome. of 35. Yeah. So we were, I think, the number 12 company. And then now we're the number one company in the state. Hell yeah. So <clears throat> Southern was is the U of L the college in Louisville okay. they're the sponsorship of that college so they pay all this money to for for advertisement but they suck they're they're not good right so they were there at the football game and I knew that they were going to be there and I didn't I told Justin I said look man I don't want to go I know myself bro they owe me a lot of fucking money yeah. and I worked hard for that money and I like I know myself I'm I'm if if I go and I see them, it's over. Like <laughs> I'm knocking everybody out. Yeah. And so he's like, "Yeah, you know, it's probably best you don't go." Well, they ended up throwing beer cans at Justin's truck, punching his truck, threatening him, and all kinds of stuff. Okay. And so Justin's calling me, and I'm with Kristen. I'm with my girl. We're eating. We're eating pizza. And he goes, bro, I don't know what to do. This never happened to me. He's like, I, I was like, bro, I already know where their office is. Don't worry about it. I'm a loyal dude. You know what I mean? Like, if mm -hmm. you take care of me, I'm going to take care of you, you know? So I fucking showed up. But I didn't have a gun or nothing. I just showed up because I was, like, going to talk to them. Like, bro, what the fuck, dude? Like, this is not what business is about, you know? And I showed up. I knocked on the door. Homie didn't want to come out. Of course. I said, Get the fuck out. I said, get your bitch ass out. Come out. I'm right here. You don't got to fucking, you don't got to portray somebody that you're not. I know you're a pussy. Come on out. And he wouldn't come out. And I kept knocking on door. I said, come out. I know you're in there. I see your truck. And then I'm walking away, bro. And then Chris is like banging on my window because she's in, she's on the passenger side. And she's like hitting my window, like trying to to get my attention. Yeah. And, and my, win my, my windows are, are like pitch black for, uh, they're tinted. Sure. And I'm like, w like, what are you, what are you hitting at? And she's hitting and I turn around, bro. And he's already, the gun's already pointed at me. And then next, you know, like nine. And yeah. I'm running, I run to the other side of the car. I duck. Like, I don't know how bullet did not hit us. I don't, yeah. I really don't know. I duck and I hear him. I hear the clip empty and I'm like, Kristen, give me my tarp knife. There's a tarp knife by you. And I use a, a tarp knife to cut synthetic underlayment for roofing. Sure. She threw me that tarp knife. He went back into the, uh, the office to get another clip and I popped two of his tires and bounced. Jesus. <laughs> and, yeah, but there's eight there's eight bullet holes in my car. I and I told the tryouts BKFC, I said, Man, how do you use somebody else's whip to come e to even come here? Because right. I got bullet holes in my car, so give me a fucking fight so I'll go get a new whip. <laughs> and and so this fight, man, I, it's different, bro. It's different. This fight's personal, you know, like it's gonna get me out of the hood. You know, it's gonna hopefully I, I you know, to a fresh start or a new life. New beginnings from from my family. No more gunshots. No more none of that. It's just you know a positive a positive life. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like my kids are not even afraid of gunshots. They're like they hear, oh, daddy, they're shooting again. That's crazy. You know, I don't I don't want that for my kids, bro. That's I don't insane. want that. So and then now this is everything, and 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 people are gonna see. And that's that's why I fight the way I fight, bro. That's why I fight with so much fucking emotion. And you see it in my face. I have emotion in me, and like, yeah, uh, I just I want I want out so bad.
you know. Okay, so your first fight, you absolutely put on a statement. Like that was a it was an awesome knockout. Were, was there any talk of if you guys had a good showing there, they could potentially use you on the California show, or did you kind of force no. that issue? Like I'm going to d- d- demolish this guy and try to get put on the California show. No, I uh, after after I knocked him out, I wanted that bonus. I didn't know anything about. Well, I mean, they talked about uh, the fight, the Knuckle Mania Four in L.A. As soon as they said L.A., I said, "Let's get it!" <laughs> right. Like, I told BKFC, line them up. I don't care. Taylor can get it next, bro. I'm not afraid of nobody. I'll fight anybody. I fought 135, 145, 155, 170, bro. I don't. I'm not afraid of nobody, man. Is 55 just a, a really good weight for you? You don't have to cut. Like, I was looking at your Instagram. You're always in shape. But then you talked about having to lose 50 pounds. But I didn't see any photo where it looked like you needed to lose 50 I, pounds. I sent you the photo, bro. It's, uh, I took three years off, you know. Okay. And, and, you know, it's when you work so much in, in Louisville, bro, it's, you, you, you're you always on the go. Yeah. And, and like, uh, like, by the time I, I'll leave my house at 430 in the morning. And I don't get home till sometimes like nine, ten o'clock at night. So Crazy. I'm on the go all day, and I'll eat out all the time. And I wasn't working out because I didn't want to look at a gym. I was so mad. Yeah. At, at like my life, I didn't want to look at a gym. I didn't want to look at fighting. Nothing. So I was over two hundred, dude. That's at the crazy. at the tryouts, I was one eighty five. Really? Yeah. <laughs> they because they weigh you in at the tryouts. Yeah. I saw that. I said, God damn, hell no. <laughs> I was pissed, dude. So uh, I had to do something different. And I just started working out and grinding. And, and I, I I felt like I got my, my old self back. Um, I, like, yeah, like you said, I used to be really fit, bro. And that was all just hard work. I don't take nothing. I, I don't even take pre-workout. You know, right. like when I go run. I smoke a blunt, drink, and I run. You know what I mean? I run and drink some water. <laughs> That's about it. But, like, I don't I don't take pre-workout. I don't take supplements, nothing. I just – it's all hard work, bro. Okay, so you uh, you get to fight Angel Core. He is an incredibly tough dude. He's a really nice guy. You're going to find out afterwards. I'm sure you guys are both – you guys are both, like, good family men. And, and mm-hmm. he already said afterwards it would be respectful. But while you guys are in there, it's going to be an absolute war. Do you see it playing out the same way as, as your last fight? Or you see it, like, taking a little bit longer? Or? I mean, I want it to be like my last fight. Everybody wants it to be like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. everybody wants that knockout, you know. But, you know, I know I know Angel or Andrew. Not Angel. Yeah, Andrew's, it's uh, Drew. Drew Angel. Drew, it's yeah. Drew. Yeah, All right, it's so true. Drew is – I know he's a gamer. He has more fights than me or more sure. bare knuckle fights, let's mm-hmm. say. But I got I feel like bare knuckles my sport because I'm already used to pretty much no gloves. I've done MMA my whole life. Okay, okay. you're talking four ounce gloves now. Right. Uh, clinching is I'm comfortable in the clinch. Uh, that's how I dropped him the first time. I put I, I clinched him and hit him with that right. So it's, I feel like bare knuckles more my sport. I'm I'm a pressure fighter. Okay. Andrew's not, or Drew's not a pressure fighter. He could say he is a pressure fighter, but we know he's not. He backs up in almost every fight that I've seen him in. I don't back up. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll move out of the way, but I don't walk backwards. That's, right. that's not me, bro. <laughs> I got too much pain and too much anger in me. I, I'm forward. Okay. So we'll see, bro. We'll see, you know? Okay, so uh, Big Ben, the ring guy, submitted a question. He wants to know what changed between your first camp and your second camp, or have you just basically been in camp the entire time? Uh, I've just been training. Um, it, you know, it's uh, it's like an addiction now. You know, it's like you, you've been gone for so long, and then you fucking, you're finally finding yourself. Yeah, and you've been in this dark tunnel forever, and then now you're in this light, and you're like, "Oh crap, dude! Like, I want to be here. I want to stay here." So you get addicted to just working hard, you know, because you don't want to go back to that dark place. Right. So I just been working, man, working. Okay, and then I mean, you already kind of touched on it, but like I was posting some stuff about one of the other fifty fivers, and you said Bobby Taylor's going to get it next. Like you, you were just ready to fight everybody, like line them up. Everybody, you're going, I don't, yeah. bro. I don't. Like I said, for, 
35, 45, 55, 70. I fought whoever, whenever. You know, like, it, it's a fight. What, 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 I'm not afraid to fail, dude. I've, I, I've failed my whole life. I've, I've failed when, when I was homeless. You know, I failed when I, I didn't have anybody to go to. But like now, I'm not gonna, I, I've already won. Right. I, like I've already, I'm doing things that nobody's been able to do. And I, I did it on my own. I did it with hard work, dedication, kids on my back, my family on my back, nobody to go to. You know what I'm saying? Like what more do they, what more do people want from me? Right. And, and then it's like, they're so quick to trash you and bash you on, so on a keyboard, oh, yeah. all this crap. And it's like, bro, you don't even know my life, homie. Just shut your mouth. That's it. Well, I feel like you're going to put on a statement. Like, this is a fight that easily could be fight of the night. I'm, I'm sure you don't want fight of the night, though. Everybody everybody talks about, like, oh, I want fight of the night. You want knockout of the night, clearly. Right? I want that bonus. Yeah. <laughs> I want that bonus. I you're want like, that money. You're like, I'm willing want, to put on whatever it takes. I hood. Yeah. I want to get, I want to get some money. I want, I want to give me a truck so I could, I, I'm pulling up in people's houses with eight bullet holes in my car and it's right. not even a truck and I'm a roofer. You know what I'm saying? I got to use a telescopic ladder to get on a 70, 70 square roof home. Right. <laughs> I want to get a truck. So, you know, yeah, man, I, I want, I want that knockout and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to push for it. So, yeah. You know, every forward, constant pressure, you know, uh, that gritty style, bro. That's me. Well, I love your story. I look forward to seeing you fight again. And hopefully, you know, like hopefully the fight goes the way you want it. And we uh, we see you back again because, like I said, you have a great story. You're a very humble person. You're on time. Like, like every, you're, you are like a, a great person to interview. Like everything about you I love. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. Okay, and if people want to people want to follow you with Instagram, Facebook, like where should uh, where should people follow you at? Uh, Dad first, Roofer second is my Instagram, and then okay. Facebook would be Ruben War. Okay, I will uh, I will include a link in the YouTube, and uh, like I said, I appreciate everything you do. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it.